hello, hello, everybody. But we are here at Brian Alchemy, Brian Alchemy, and it is a Powerpuff takeover. So I'm here with my girlfriend Francesca and Iman, and today we're going to do the takeover where we will talk about sacred sisterhood, our favorite topic, and the feminine frame in a modern day world. So let's kick off. Hello, hello, where are you dialing in from? Let us know where you're from. Lovely to have you. Let's kick it off, girls. Yeah. So, mm, first of all, okay. sisterhood. I'm gonna ask. Francis. So, wait, what is your name? Oh, shit. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, my name. Hi. Name. Hi. So, we are the Powerpuff Girls. No, I am Gia. I am a wellness coach, um, conscious kink, and sexuality guide. Um, I have been at Fire and Alchemy hosting events uh, called The Seductress. We are doing more delicious events that combine sexuality, sensuality, as well as touching around trauma um, and stepping into the edges of kink. So it's, it's fun, it's light, it's playful. I've really enjoyed being in this space. And yes. Okay, so <laughs> hi everyone. I'm Iman. Excuse the deep voice. It's um, recovering from a cold at the moment, but um, I'm also a practitioner here at Fire and Alchemy. I'm an energy master. I facilitate women's circles and I'm a womb and fertility massage practitioner, which is so exciting right now because it combines everything that I absolutely love, so much magic. Um, and I'll be hosting a womb healing circle here um, on Wednesday, so if you're interested in that, please tune in and put your tickets by Fire and Alchemy. Mm. Hello. 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 Hello, Hello everyone joining. Thank you so much. It's so exciting um, for us to all be here in the same space together. And Fire and Alchemy, if you haven't checked it out yet, by the way, it's the hottest place in London. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my name is Francesca. I'm a shamanic practitioner and feminine embodiment coach. Um, a lot of my work is weaving together the dark and the light that we move through and bringing ourselves into wholeness. Um, and I also host a lot of events here and they vary, you know, they really vary because there is so much complexity to the work that we work on and the layers that we access. And sometimes, you know, I work on a very multi-dimensional level in the spirit realms when we, when we work with shamanic stuff. So we're often going through past lives and then going through um, ancestral healing and working through that kind of element. But we also really have to include the body wisdom within that, the intuitive body wisdom that we all hold because the trauma is in the body. So it's really about that integration of the mind-body and then bringing in spirit, bringing in soul, working on a soul level. So, yeah, we've got exciting events that uh, are coming up. So check that out on Fire and Alchemy. But today, yeah, we're here to talk about sisterhood because this is our utmost favourite topic um, and how we have formed our friendship mm. in this way. And it really is from a space of sisterhood. So I think we all have individual stories around it. Um, so I don't know how do, I don't. It was just a. It's just a knowing for, for most of us. Oh, but how do we want to talk about sisterhood? Well, let's begin with. First of all, I'd love to. Um, I'd love for you guys to drop in the comments what comes up for you when you hear the word sisterhood. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm all about working with the shadows. So what shadows has come up for you around sisterhood mm -hmm. and uh, relationship with girlfriends? But um, I'd love to maybe we can go around and answer that question yeah. to ourselves mm, yeah. and then how we came about. So I guess I'm talking, so I'll continue. <laughs> um, this is interesting because we were talking about we want more friends. And we were talking about friends, like should friendship, and as adults, um, it seems as though we become, I was saying, refined and we have more filters and we become clearer about our energy. Therefore, having new friends isn't as easy mm. as when you are younger and maybe more open to receive all the different experiences. Um, but that, in saying that, I think for me, what is sisterhood? And 
I almost feel like our relationship is very unique because it's the same principle that I use in my romantic relationship. Mm. I'm seeking something that feels so aligned, mm. where it is effortless to be in presence, but the effort comes in the growth of moving through the dynamics together. Mm. So I almost feel as if there isn't, it's almost like being in a relationship, you two have set the bars for me on what all other relationships yes. 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 right? Yes. It's like, <laughs> if Anna and Francesca are doing this, then we're not all good. So, to me, um, yeah, sisterhood is also an unraveling, mm -hmm. an unraveling of self and programming mm -hmm. um, through the eyes of others. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, I, I, I dropped my mic past the world. <laughs> Such beautiful words, Gia, because I think I think we're all in resonance with your description of how this feels and how unique um, this space is and the way we navigate it. And it isn't like any other friendship that I've that I've had with sisters before. And I think looking at the shadows for me in terms of sisterhood, a lot of it was around trust and around safety. Um, and that feeling of jealousy from other women and competition. And then when you step into this space, there is a new level that's hit, there's a new bar. And you're like, damn, I didn't know it could feel like this. I didn't know this was what healthy friendship looked like and what it felt like. And it didn't come through any sort of um, forced feeling it just was and it just is and it just flowed and it was just so beautiful like neither one of us put on a face of anything that we weren't we kind of came into this space in unity together and we just allowed ourselves to meet each other on the different levels on the different days and the different ways and there was just no judgment mm. and i think that's one of the most beautiful things that i found about our friendship mm. it, it's the space to just be and the space to just be you freely knowing that there is no judgment in this space and it is just let me receive you where you are mm. let me hold you in this space what can i do for you and i'm looking at you guys and i just love you guys <laughs> <laughs> but but it's just you know I, I think for me, even in any relationship that I go into now, whether it's another sisterhood or whether it's a uh, you know, romantic relationship, this is what I want it to feel like. And yeah. if it doesn't feel like this, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. um, and I say this a lot and it sounds really like, oh, well, she's so closed off. But it's just like, I want the freedom to be held in sisterhood, to be me in sisterhood, to be received. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it's such a powerful thing when you can offer that to each other, mm -hmm. when you can offer that in the space. So thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's really coming up with me, um, is, as you shared, is coming back to the feminine mm -hmm. and how sisterhood can allow us to drop into our feminine and really flow with it. When we are speaking with other women on that same level of we all move through the cycles that we're moving through, we're not crazy, right? We're not crazy that we have all of these different personas because that's what makes all of us. Like we have our, you know, the wild woman that comes through during the luteal phase of our menstruation. We move in cycles and to meet um, in sisterhood for me it's those spaces and, like, and you've been able to both reflect this back for me where it's like oh my goodness there's permission for me to mm. be in all my phases mm. that I'm very aware of that I'm going through but yet mm. we often feel in modern society that we need to like show up and just be this consistent person and have to move through life in like this robotic way when you've got this waves of emotion that are flowing through you all the time mm. so sister for me and being in those spaces is like oh my goodness yeah <laughs> I don't have to wear that like consistent whatever that was mask to just be in the, in in this world to be in in the world that we live in and when i'm with you both i can just drop into 
what's moving through me? And I know you touched on this, and I know you touched on this in your thing, like, what's moving through me right now? Because we are forever changing, we are forever evolving. You know, what I say, like, right now, compared to what I'm just about to say, is gonna be very different, just because I'm letting it flow through me. And that's the permission that we have gathered within ourselves in this system. But it's really that permission of every moment and, yeah, no judgment. And I think, talking about woundings, because I know some people have mentioned there about um, trust, what we said here, wounding and trust, the wounding. And um, I feel like we've had this conversation before about like the wounding of the sisterhood and where that actually derives from. And from a personal level, it's very much uh, the mother wounding that has created that for me. The, um, the relationships I've seen my mother have with other women in her life and how that was mirrored um, mm. and how I would hear her talk about other women and that making me feel the distrust. And yeah, uh, and I've deeply distrusted, um, I wouldn't even just say women, but women being the byproduct, you know, if I can't even trust my own gender at some point, mean, at one point, like how can I trust anybody? So, um, but it's really stemmed from that, um, relationship that I've had with my mother and seeing the complexities of uh, the power dynamics within my within my mother and then then showing up and being afraid of that in relationships with other women don't want to be too much don't want to be seen um, because oh like what if they're going to reject me what if they're going to try and insult me and so this is a big part of what I talk about because it's so dear to me and I feel like you know the mother woman runs within all of us um, to a certain extent you know so this is where sisterhood wounds really do come from. Mm -hmm. what, what would you say for me? I mean, personally, yeah. Yeah, I think I, I can absolutely resonate and, and relate to that. And also just my experiences growing up, um, you know, I, I didn't find it easy to be friends with women. Um, I, I tended to be friends with more men just because I, I, get, I actually got bullied um, by a lot of women in school and that was really difficult for me. Um, but what's interesting is that Allowing yourself to trust again and to be in spaces with women is actually the, one of the most brave, bravest things you can do because you're almost cracking open your heart again to say, please accept me as I am. I'm willing to give you me. And in this space is where actually the unraveling that you've talked about happens because it's the delayering of the wounding and then the sort of acceptance of where that's come from and then this the healing happens mm -hmm. and with regards to the feminine energy like I, I always say like you have to be able to step into space with other women in order to truly heal your feminine energy because sisterhood is such an important part of that and through that I've been so inspired mm -hmm. by my sisters to be more feminine in certain ways to step into more feminine spaces and that's part of the power of healing the feminine you can step into space with other women and be like okay this is my wounding this is why I couldn't trust this is why I didn't feel safe with other women mm -hmm. but I'm actually here because I recognize that and I want to be part of a sisterhood that allows me to heal that I think the first time me and you ever collabed on a circle we were just both like we're here also to heal our own sisterhood wounds yeah. as well as help you all and I think there's so much power mm -hmm. in just admitting that and saying you know what I I have suffered at the hands of my gender and that's okay, but I'm not willing to close off my heart to it. And in mm -hmm. fact, the fact that I'm allowing myself to be brave enough to step into space again means that I'm ready and willing to heal. And when you have supportive sisters, that process becomes so much easier to do. Um, and then, then, then comes all the beautiful stuff like the inspiration and, <laughs> and the holding and the support. Support, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's a big thing, constant support, and, and it's beautiful to watch. And, and the cheerleading, oh my god, I've never had that. The cheerleading, like, I can say anything to these two, and they're like, yes, sis, get in there. I'm just like, wow, somebody sees me. And it's just, it's, it's a beautiful feeling to be seen, um, because a lot of people especially when you've been when you've been bullied you know you do feel invisible you feel like it affects your self-worth um it affects so much uh, and I, i've had wounding from previous relationships and wounding with the father wound as well and all of that is like layers upon layers of wounding but it all kind of impacts the way you are seen the way you see yourself and and the way you allow people to hold you as well mm, yeah it's, it's interesting because on the way here we were talking about the event that was just happening downstairs called, the, is it the Sacred Rage? Yeah, mm -hmm. amazing. I was like, I wish I was in it. 
<laughs> so everything is on range now. But um, so I was teaching sound, and some of my students were like, oh, someone's snoring, someone's breathing loud, and they couldn't really set a into it. And but it was room for the women. But what it made me think about was, as women, how challenging it is for us to rest. And I'll go back to this, that how this connects with the shadow. Mm -hmm. But this theme of is it safe to rest as women? Is it safe to surrender? Is it safe to receive? And then using any triggers as a way to justify, oh, I can't rest. Mm -hmm. right? And if I draw this back, and what came through to me was um, before we were talking, before we came here, I was thinking about way back, even about like Lilith and Eve, and one is submissive, one is you know a dragon, and this idea of which frame which archetype is more pleasing to a man or to the world which receives more which has to fight for more and growing up in thailand it was very much like that you have the wild woman who you know would be in sex work and be like no i'm going to make my money and provide for my family then you have the women who will be groomed and trained to be seen but not spoken to to marry a western man and so that they can support for their family. Both women are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. again, one is judged and shamed and one isn't. Mm -hmm. So when I was coming here, I was like, yeah, the sacred rage. Why is it mm -hmm. that, you know, we talk about sisterhood wounds and judgment and shame that our own gender has on us. Mm -hmm. Is this a society thing? Is this a cultural thing? Is, is this a religious thing? It's mm -hmm. so embedded deep that it's never just one one thing is such mm -hmm. a spectrum yeah mm -hmm. and in saying that for me having all of these pro programming um being with you you ladies is actually that safety to break open which is one of the harder things for me because yeah. i didn't want to be like eve and you know like i don't know sweet talk my way through to survival but yet I couldn't sustain a lifestyle of being Lilith either because that mm. takes a lot of energy too. Mm. But just that safe space to surrender it took so much and it took us going to bloody Tulum of Guatemala <laughs> for me to actually allow you two to hold me. Mm. And you think about 37 years of not ever being held, not by my mother, not by my sister, not by, but just by two women that, and we haven't known each other really for ages, mm. but it's, the work that you both are doing on yourselves that creates that safety for me to know that it's okay to be exactly where I am. So that's, yeah. Gosh, that's a long-winded one. <laughs> um, do we want to t move into uh, what it means for us to be in our feminine frame in a modern day world? Yeah. No. <laughs> no, I, I, I said yes, oh, but yeah. like, We've touched on it in our own ways in terms yeah. of just how we operate around other women. Um, and then, what does it mean to express our femininity in a modern world? It's, uh, you know, it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> like, it feels yeah. tough. In, and it feels, um, on my, on my, in my world, I'm like, my feminine is safe in my home, in my little, mm. in my little cave. And that's where I get to nourish her and I get to see her and mm -hmm. we get to have this beautiful like inward relationship and we're starting to see this become more widespread right the feminine's starting to come out of that cave and mm -hmm. she's been there and she's starting to come out now and it's that's why we're hearing these types of um, events such as the sacred rage because right now we're going through this planetary process right where the feminine is tired of being in that cage because she's been in there for so long and I'm getting angry talking about it now <laughs> you know but it's true it brings up this like and it comes from the depth of the womb and you I can feel it now yeah. like it's just and it's surging because it's like how dare I have been kept so um, dormant so that I cannot be seen by the outside world because that is a threat and that is going to kill me just by ultimately showing up as this one part of me, this one part of me that is the most powerful force. Like she's transformational. She knows the, the importance of the death and rebirth cycles. 
And we need this for our existence to flow in harmony. And this is, this is where we're getting at, right? But it's like, in order for, and you mentioned the wild woman, because that's the, that's the era we're in right now. It's the wild woman that's like raging her way to be seen. And it's almost like, we're seeing it a lot and it's creating, I do feel like we're in this space though that is kind of creating a bit of a, well, as anything, like it's crumbling. So it's now, there is an effect, I can, we can see this happening with men as well. And I want to bring that in because mm -hmm. you, we are seeing that effect on men and how it is becoming, uh, like they don't know where their place is in the world now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, because there has been so much of the uproar around women and we have so much more rights now, you know, everything's happening. And I just want to bring that in if, the, if there are men that are listening to this because we recognize it. You know, how, how often do you recognize that in men? And it's just, yeah. you know, and women are, yes, they're taking, our, they're taking our places. And it's almost like we're raging to this point where, like, we deserve. But it's still bringing ourselves back into the balance and the harmony within mm -hmm. ourselves too, right? We're not here to overpower. We're here to bring back empowerment. And it's very different. It's power mm -hmm. with, not power mm -hmm. over. It's funny you say that because I was explaining to um, a, a group of women that I was teaching. I was like, there's a difference between like female empowerment and almost like the fem feminist movement, you know, mm -hmm. right? Because it's not the same. Like being in your feminine frame, being in your sacred rage, being in your healthy boundaries, being in your, you know, your embodiment of your sensuality and sexuality has nothing to do with just, this is my rise and blow up light. It's mm -hmm. actually, I am asking for a need to be met. Mm -hmm. And these needs are very much human rights needs to feel safe, to be seen, to be heard. And in that, I can create safety and connection and intimacy with you so that I can soften mm. and it shouldn't be a privilege to be able to feel safe to soften mm. and I think when we come from that space yeah. allowing the masculine again we're talking about you know polarities and energetics here but the masculine frame um, to move in their natural framework of actually they want to it's almost like their love language is um, what you call it, service, yeah. right? And their love language to receive is act of service too. Mm -hmm. So if that is the case, then how do we create space for them to express their love through act of service? Mm. You know, we don't really go then be like, someone opens the door, like, why you open the door for me, man? Mm -hmm. I can open the door for myself. Actually, that's really, that's not just sweet. You, everyone knows you can open the door for yourself unless mm -hmm. you physically can't. But why is it so hard for us to just accept the kind gesture. I think I think this is this comes back to where we where we are as women now and where we have been as women. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us have been really living out of that masculine energy. Even as women, we've been so dominant in our masculine because we've needed to survive and the feminine only really gives a shit about survival. That is her main like focus, like how do I survive? How do I survive? And that constant acting out of survival means that you don't get to rest in your feminine, it means that you're constantly on the go. And this is this is stuff that I talk about when I do the womb work because a lot of the time when we're stressed as women, our reproductive system shuts down. And the way, to, the way to bring down a nation is through its women because we are the most powerful. So if you were to bring down a nation through its women, you make the woman stressed, her reproductive organs shut down because she's in fight or flight and you don't need your reproductive organs to survive in fight or flight. So the body's only thinking about survival. It's shut down your reproductive organs. You now cannot reproduce, cannot create, and not just a child, but just anything, right? Because this is the space from which all creation exists. So when we think about this and what, what we as women have been conditioned to think of as normal through things like, for example, the feminist movement, we end up finding ourselves in a position where we have been disempowered. And that's really interesting to recognize because when you do think about feminine empowerment, feminine empowerment means to love my femininity, mm -hmm. to honor my femininity, to understand how beautiful being in my feminine is. That is feminine empowerment. Mm. And, and a lot of women don't know what it feels like to love their femininity because they see femininity as a weakness. Mm -hmm. So if I see femininity as a weakness, why would I like it? Mm -hmm. Why would I champion it? Why would I champion it in my sisters? Why would I say, I love you being this soft? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then on the other side, where we've had destruction of masculine energy as well, you don't have that safety to soften. Mm -hmm. There isn't that container anymore. 
And it's interesting because what, what we need to do is bring back the unity, mm -hmm. right? It's never about one over the other because that's not the way we exist. We exist in unity, we exist in balance, and we exist in harmony. And in order for us to do that, we need to encourage each other to love our energy, to love our natural expression, mm -hmm. to not think of it as weak. And if I see it in my sister, I'm going to call it out and say, I love that for you. Mm. I love you being soft today. Mm. I love you being a little bit chaotic today because that is feminine. I love you expressing your sacred rage because your natural expression is sacred. And this is my invitation to any men who are watching, right? The things that you love about your women, love them deeply. But the things that you find annoying about your women, like the fact that she might be too emotional one day, love them fucking deeply. <laughs> because those are the things that make her feminine. Mm. Honestly, when I started um, meeting mm. the divine masculine, and I thought about the things that I loved about him, uh, you know, structure was one of them, truth was another thing. And I thought, oh, I love this idea of truth in a relationship. No, no holds barred. Truth all the fucking way. Because I, I lacked that in a lot of my previous relationships. So truth makes me feel secure. Yeah. It makes me feel safe because I know what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. But then on the other side, I'm going to get truths I don't like. But I'm still going to fucking love it in the masculine yeah. because it is the same thing that gives me that security and that safety. Yeah. So it's the opposite way around. For any men listening, please still love the things that fucking annoy you about the women <laughs> and about the feminine because it's what makes them feminine. And we need men to, to support us in our feminine energy yeah. because our feminine energy is so fucking powerful. Mm -hmm. It's so fucking sacred. If you knew the magic that we could create, the healing that we could do in this world, if we were just supported to love that femininity. Mm. I love that. And I just want to say, like, any, anyone who's re-watching this and any guys who are watching this, we'd love to hear you, like, in the comment, what your thoughts are mm. about, you know, modern-day women. And if you're single, you're modern-day women and dating. Like, what, <laughs> what are you experiencing? How are you finding it challenging to step up and be a man and all that mm. jazz? We'd love to, like, read your comments, um, be engaging. We'll be keeping active on it. Um, how are we doing on time, my love? Yeah. yeah? Okay, a few minutes. so, um, I'd like to throw my thoughts on this, and I'll try to not waffle, but the, so in King, we talk about... Is there a question? Um, no, I don't think there's no. an answer, that's what's that. So in um, King and BDSM, uh, what's known, very you know, well known about the power dynamics is the Dom and the Sub, and... It's interesting because a lot of women I hear today are like, oh, I don't want to be sub, I don't want to be submissive. And mm. there's this whole theme, and even for me, when someone asks me, oh, are you like subby? And I'm like, I'm not really good at being subby, but I tell you something, when I get a nice, strong, masculine, you know, man, I'll be like, I'll be on my hands and knees and subbing all the way to the other <laughs> land. Because there is nothing more nothing more pleasurable for me than to switch my brain off yeah. and be like i got you mm. you know i got you don't think i ordered this I, you know there were champagnes here mm. the food's there you're wearing this i got you how wonderful it is to know that i'm fully taken care of someone's thought about what i'm wearing that fits me that means i had to take care of well as my dress size someone knows that i'm you know has dietary requirements so i can't be drinking lactose all of these little like intricate things of intimacy is built in a BDSM and kink dynamic and play. And it's just so lovely to be held fully mm. in that. So yeah, I will sub for the right guy. See, this is powerful, right? Because I talk about this a lot because the word submissive is actually very triggering to some people. So yeah. if you do feel triggered by that word, please um, let us know your thoughts around it and where that trigger is coming from. But... This is the power in what you've just said. I will do it for the right man. And a lot of women have been in relationships where they've given over that power to the wrong man, been really hurt by it. I've been cheated on plenty of times. I've been physically abused, emotionally abused, the list goes on. But I gave the power of myself, of my energy, to the wrong person. And then I clouded my judgment and thought all men were like that. And I couldn't trust any man. And I already have father wounding. So the story runs deep. But when you give that to the right man, to the divine masculine, 
there is power in that because the power is your choice mm -hmm. and there is empowerment in choice. You can choose who you want to be submissive to and that takes away some of the um, negative connotations around that word yeah. because it's not forced, it's a no. choice. Yeah. This is what I'm doing and I'm choosing. Yeah, and that's so important. Mm -hmm. It's about consent. And it's, actually, oh, sorry, you just, go ahead. Just to close this <laughs> off at this point, in BDSM, the person with the power is the sub, is the bottom. You cannot offer lead without someone to lead and to, without someone to mm. follow. Like, there is no position for you. It's like being CEO but have no yeah. like employees. So um, sorry, yes, go that's ahead. powerful. No, I, I've never thought about that. I just wanted to add that there is also the the trauma elements to all of this too. Mm. And, un and really understanding and tuning into your body to recognize what mm. your needs are before we even step into the spaces of any of this work, yes. any of that, right? Or dating, because you need to be able to tune into your body mm. and understand what makes you feel safe mm. and the triggers that your body is telling you, yes. which is signaling unsafe, which means you will revert into a trauma response. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So those are very key things to yes. actually feel into before we you know, move through things because it's so easy and our autopiloted mind loves to revert us into mm. uh, the, the trauma bonding and yeah. hands up, you know, I've been there and I know it and I'm aware of it and yet it's still, I still am tuning into my body and recognizing, well, Okay, well, what is it? What is the deeper need here? What am I not meeting within myself that I'm trauma bonding towards this person to fill that void? So there's that element that's really, really important just to finalize yeah. it. And, and we are going to have to put an end to this. I, I mean, I can, can talk I about all of this all day, of course. <laughs> <laughs> about a year ago, I actually wrote down a list. I think I shared this with you girls, but I wrote down a list of the things that make me feel safe emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually. And I wanted to know deeply what each thing did for me to make me feel safe. So I really like cuddles and that makes me feel safe because I feel physically like I'm being held. And that helps my nervous system because it helps me to co-regulate. So I was very specific about the types of things that made me feel safe within myself in all different aspects. Mm -hmm. And then that beautiful list became the standard by which I was measuring, not just my romantic relationships, but also any other relationship mm -hmm. that I stepped into. And that's a really powerful thing for you to do, to understand what safety means for you within yourself first, before you step into any type of relationship. Mm -hmm. So that's my final words. Thank you. And my final words is if you, um, I have a worksheet called needs and feelings. So where you look at um, what are your needs, where it hasn't been met, what are the feelings that's attached to that, and then we can work backwards around the block, the energetic blocks and experiences mm. to start the healing process. So if that's something that feels of benefit to you, um, drop me a DM, uh, slide into my DMs, and uh, we can get that. And then I'll also love to offer you a free 15 minutes energy audit, just to see, guide you how the first stages of moving through those blocks. Peace <laughs> Oh, what a pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Starting over there, ending over here. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, and thank you to the wonderful Rachel. Fire and Alchemy, you are a godsend blessing. <laughs> if you haven't checked out this place, please, please, please do. Uh, they have so many amazing events, so many amazing crystals and books and herbs. And you get to meet the wonderful Rachel, who is just incredible. <laughs> Bye. Bye.